You know, try to win a pair of them. Huh? What are you trying to win? Oh, are those on crosslink? Those, those are us, bro. <laughs> why? Huh? How is that a? Why are we we're going to a trade shoes? show? Where we're going to about to give away some Air Jordans. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's happening. Um, yeah. What's your giveaway? Uh, Air Jordans. Um, sign me up. The uh, so what's going on? Nothing. How was your July 4th? Spectacular. Aside from it being miserably hot. Yeah, it was really hot right now. Yeah. The, um, we went to the beach down, there's a lake by us, um, and we went down to the beach and watched fireworks go off. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a good time. It's very chaotic there, um, so you have to just park a little ways, walk through some neighborhoods to get out of all the crazy traffic. That sounds especially fun after sweating all morning on the golf course. Yeah. I did nothing. It was fantastic. So I'm going golfing um, Thursday. Oh, that's right. At Hawks Landing. You ever been there? No. no. So we're going to Hawks Landing. I've been wanting to go there. It's quite pricey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I haven't been there. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm taking the brother-in-law. Is he paying? No. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the uh, 1099 DA, the news um, came out recently about the regulations on crypto. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they finally figured out a way to try to get some tracking of it. There's always been, you're supposed to report it, but it had never really came out on a, a particular form or figured out ways to require certain brokers to report those to the IRS. So that's going to be a, like absolute reporting on this form 1099DA for next tax season. I think that's the goal. Uh, it probably won't be entirely reported on them. I can imagine that probably still some, depending on where you got your digital assets from, mm -hmm. it might still come on a 1099B. Mm. Maybe. Don't they all, so they all, they all flow to the Schedule D? Yeah. So they're all reported basically the same as a 1099B with your stocks. Mm -hmm. um, but this form 1099DA, I was looking at it. Is it pretty similar? Uh, to the 1099B? Yeah. I mean, mostly in structure, it looks like. Obviously, uh, a few different types of bits of information here according to where you got it from or broker type. Now, a little insider, are you guys like preparing for this form? Not that I've seen yet. You guys pretty much wait for the actual. Um, well, being probably, that mostly it's only a draft form, um, it's not going to be as part of the 2024 filing season or 2025 season, mm -hmm. 2024 tax year. So this won't really, I'm sure early on around this time next year, they'll probably be adding that in there for testing and trying to get it. Uh, built into the system in a functional fashion. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we can import, like, large transactions of stock sales right now through, like, a CSV file. Yeah. So I would assume that we would be able to do the same with uh, digital assets. Probably if they come in a way, like, the CSV file is getting imported based off of... You know, when they actually get like a, a large 1099B, mm -hmm. multiple sales mm -hmm. listed, and you enter that into the uh, Excel and it goes in the CSV file. Uh, this probably could in some instance come that way, but I don't know if they're going to have these kind of as a singular kind of transaction. Like you're just going to get the 1099DA instead of like um, when you receive a 1099B, it's like a summary of all your transactions for that that year. Yeah, and this could probably work in the same way as far as, I mean, it's as long as you're accounting for it, there's really, uh, I don't know what their requirements are going to be if they want to know 
like hard and fast, like, yes, it was a kiosk operator or a digital asset payment processor, if that's going to be a part of the requirement. Because really, in reality, you can just enter everything on the 8949 transaction. Yeah, I was doing... Short-term, long-term. And I was doing a little bit of uh, research, and it was like they want to know the actual blockchain ID so they can mm-hmm. actually tell, like... Because everything on the blockchain is public anyway, so... You know, it's gonna. They're gonna drill it all the way down to this form, and and this is gonna be reported on. Um, some of the the changes that I uh, recognized was, you know, everyone's saying that the IRS is this new IRS now since 2021 um, with the in, was the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. They gave all that funding to the IRS, mm-hmm. and that um, they really stepped up their game as far as technology. Uh, employees. The the stat I saw was in 2021, the IRS's average employee age was 61 years old. <laughs> uh, so they had to get younger um, to get with the times. Um, they, you know, they're starting to implement more AI technology as well mm-hmm. and diving into the blockchain and actually making this crypto thing. Because I think, you know, they came off the question on the 10, uh, 1040. Um, oh did you yeah yeah so but from everything that i've read there's still like 75 percent of crypto traders not reporting. not reporting their crypto especially like and i'm i'm far out of understanding anything to deal with cryptocurrency and digital assets but they do have those kiosks mm-hmm. right and i don't understand how those operate but and you know where you go in and, and you can would basically just convert your money into crypto and put it in your wallet? I assume so. But if you're operating through those and then if it's just in your wallet, how are those ever really getting tracked? And I think now, obviously, this is their yeah, I, way against that. From what I've seen and listened to, like they can pretty much, if they wanted to gut your wallet, I think they call it dusting. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But they <laughs> Sounds could, like a weird name <laughs> to come up with. <laughs> the IRS could... <laughs> pretty much clear out your wallet because like the big digital wallet MetaMask, um, it's, I, th- I think, you know, they're having to report as well, mm. all these transactions. So it's a, I mean, it's a big deal. I, th- um, a lot of what I heard, you know, that a lot of the audits have basically been, if there had anything to do with crypto, it was because the, the individual was doing something, you know, illegal that they, um, and they were dealing in crypto. Mm-hmm. So now it's turning to, um, oh, you just didn't report your crypto. Right. And we're going to audit you now. Um, so, yeah, I, a lot of eyeballs on this. And, uh, a lot of things to come, I would assume. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, obviously what they've been wanting to do for since the inception of crypto and people trading that and the value of those changing. So uh, it's probably gonna i don't, I like don't know a, how many of these we'll actually see in, in 2025 do you do you hold any season. crypto no no i don't know anything about it i have like uh <laughs> pennies of crypto that's good <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you know during covid you know I, I was just curious all over the map but um because there was nothing to do um and ended up getting like a coinbase account mm. and like buying random cryptos i never sold any yeah just sitting in there not it's not valuable at all but i was just wanting to like be educated and see how it worked kind of the technology um but you know maybe 20 years from now that that stupid uh coin that i thought was one small a good coin name you got um hey maybe it will uh, let me retire yeah sure i believe it speaking of retire <laughs> i wanted to retire this morning uh when i went and worked out ah um, that's why you don't do that. Yeah. So the, we did muscle ups today, um, and, uh, the bike and the bike's not good, but I would, did want to talk about this new mouthpiece I got. You get one of those boss root and breathers. It was, it's called Airwave, Um, and it goes on the bottom and it like holds your tongue down. So you more oxygen, you can breathe. Uh, it's like molded to your teeth. Um, I will tell you, I did lift as much weight as I've ever lifted on on the snatch. We did a strength piece 
Um, so, and I did like crush it on muscle ups today mm. and I'm not saying that it was the mouthpiece, but I'm saying it could be that I've, I've taken like two days in a row off. Now, how ridiculous does this thing look? You can't even see it. You just put it in like a mouth guard. Yeah. It's like, it looks like a kind of like a retainer. So you can't even see the thing. <laughs> yeah. You can just hold it right there. Just hold, hold that thought. Yeah. Uh, you know what I did this morning? I just, not that. Felt great. Came here, <laughs> crushed coffee. Well, I also took my uh, 12-year-old son. He uh, has... Seems like it's child abuse. <laughs> um, no, he's doing good. He can't, he can't squat. Like, if you just say, okay, just squat. His knees, like, cave in, so we're working on him because he walks on his toes. Yeah. And it's just hard for him, so, but he's getting better. And he just thinks he crushes everything. He's like, because the the score today was like the number of wall balls, um, and he like got fifty four, and I got like twenty four, and so he thinks he beat dad. Kind of did. He yeah okay. Yeah. Um, another thing we wanted to touch on. Um, I saw some of these like on accounting today. They have they uh, posted an article. Can we pull it up, Batul? The, yeah, it's that second one. If you scroll up to the Miami one. I think it's the first one. Yeah. And yeah, so this article, if we scroll to the header, the it's just a, like a tax fraud blotter they put out. Um, and this article, it says, uh, Broward County Sheriff's Deputy Alexandra Acosta, she's 38 years old, has been convicted of conspiracy to defraud the Small Business Administration, two counts of false statements to the SBA, and wire fraud, all in relation to COVID-19 relief fraud. So it looks like she um, submitted the Paycheck Protection Program. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm kind of – I know that's been like a very large – place for fraud it's a huge area yeah We're well they kind of ne- not necessarily made it easy but definitely opened the door for a lot of people filing false ppp loans yeah and especially at that time when people are just like losing their minds because mm-hmm. of uh, the pandemic you know and it seemed like you know very easy to just submit this form mm-hmm. and collect a large amount of money yeah and i'm like reading through this one i'm kind of surprised like a lot of them I would have expected like to be harsher on were the larger ones. It looks like hers was only twenty thousand. Uh, oh, because she's what she, well she she stole. Oh yeah, she had only twenty thousand from the PPP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen a lot where they're like hundred thousand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it was. Uh, but she's facing up to twenty years in prison for this. Saw that. <laughs> That's cr- yeah. I mean, hey. I mean, either make an example or. Uh, uh, maybe the uh, wire fraud holds a lot more weight than I realize. Yeah, that one. That one is, you know, a huge deal because I know they're just cracking down all over the place. There's fraud, probably just mountains of fraud from this PPP. Mm-hmm. And reading through this article, hers definitely seemed like the lightest of. Uh, yeah, cause scroll down a little bit, Batul. All of them. Uh, up a little bit. Yeah, right there. Yeah. That one where I think he yeah, skimmed over a hundred thousand dollars off of these courses, and then and it was report the it. if you look the person that actually filed it for her, he's got a year of probation mm-hmm. and five thousand dollars in fine. Yeah, in a hundred hours of community service, like that's like that person knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I don't to, know to uh, get the lesser of the fines, but yeah, and then the other one. Um, if we scroll down, I think there was one in Illinois. Yeah, there was. Uh, keep going. I think it's under Atlanta. Uh, maybe not. It was a little, I think it's a little bit further down. Oh, there yeah. It yeah, there it is. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name, but uh, Nico has been sentenced to Just a year. A <laughs> no, I'm good. Just one shot. <laughs> sentenced to a year and a day in prison for overstating on personal returns the amount of his business expenses and his charitable contributions. And as me and you know, that that's very common. Oh, 
easy, but I mean, overstating is an understatement, really. I mean, yeah, what he was a, a salesperson, but for four hundred seventy-four thousand miles driven, calculate that for a day. It's uh, thirteen hundred miles. I did the math earlier. <laughs> every day for three hundred sixty-five days, it's like twelve ninety. It's still totally possible. Yeah, sure. I don't like. Yeah, the guy must have been eating out at a lot of fine dining restaurants too. At mm. two hundred sixty-three thousand in business-related meal expenses, like. Obviously, in, in any kind of Schedule C area, you might fluff some numbers here and there. It's a bit like miles, like, you know. That's some, alarming. Yeah, like you can say, okay, uh, I can remember going this place, this place, right. and, you know, document it, you know, get it um, on paper and, like, make a actual argument for your job. But someone putting this down, I mean, okay. what else are you thinking about besides your refund? <laughs> How how are you even working in those days? <laughs> yeah, I mean that is way upside down. Driving everywhere to go eat, and, and the person the filing it, same thing. Um, you know, there is uh, liable in my opinion as oh, the yeah. person's um, tax return is on. Like they know but some people don't there. even know. Like, <clears throat> you go to a, a prepare hand off your stuff, come back, and they're like, "Man, you, I got some good news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're gonna get twenty thousand dollars back." Wait for it. <laughs> All right. Um, it, you know, you pay me five, whatever, and you get 20 back. And you know, some of these people are like 20 grand. Like, oh my gosh. It's like, Sounds I'm not going to ask any more questions. This right. guy's, this guy's a professional. Um, let's do it. And then come to find out you got 474,000 mile, <laughs> miles on your schedule C <laughs> and you made five grand. Mm. The IRS is definitely going to have some questions. Um, Just a couple. I mean, and then also what it, there was that. Alleged donations of more than sixty-three thousand dollars to the church. Uh, records of the church. Okay, so yeah, I thought that was what I misread. That I thought the church donations what led them to find out the miles were vastly overstated. Mm. But, uh, that's not the case. But yeah, doing stuff like that, obviously, at some like someone just takes one person a quick glance at the return and be like, yeah, this is. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have some kind of uh, technology, which, you know, the return might get accepted. Yeah, but once it gets into the processing, there's probably some, you know, algorithms or something they use to say, okay, this is way, this this number on this line is way over, the, whatever marker that is. Yeah, they might have. Let's some pull kind that of out and flags that say like this is. Let's look into this one now. The system's not perfect, but. Eventually, it'll probably, especially with if they start implementing AI, I'm sure there's other yeah. I mean, throw uses a tax for that. I'm sure you could throw a, a, a tax return into Chat GPT, and it would tell you like the uh, amounts that are over the averages and all that kind of stuff. It's probably using, like some using sort those. of likelihood that would this could be accurate or not. But yeah, that's. Uh, but I don't know about throwing a social in Chat GPT. That's kind of sus to me, but. Technology, yeah, man. AI models they'll build off of Chat GPT, uh, that those types of things, uh, definitely are something that's going to be used if they're not already using it. Oh, yeah, AI will become the overlord, president AI. Yeah, we just need to like keep a healthy line that it doesn't cross. I don't know how you do that, you can't when it becomes sentient. <laughs> yeah, the. Have you seen the guy, the first guy that got the um, Neuralink in him? I've seen one small interview with him. Because he's, he's paraplegic. Right. So he can't move anything. Um, but what I saw is he's basically on a computer. There's an app mm-hmm. that is synced to Neuralink and that he can control the mouse movements with his thoughts. Yeah, I did see a clip of that. That it's wild. is wild. Completely wild. I want it. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, Gotta you be don't. One of the early adopters. He looks fine. Yeah. He seems happy. He's paraplegic. Like, he's getting to, like, experience things that he probably thought, like, I'm never going to be able to right. do. Um, so I get it. But I'm like, I'm never. Like, they... There's like a chunk missing out of his head. 
and they like put the chip like no they gotta get in there somehow <sighs> not me i'm i won't ever do it no. Well, I'll be vastly superior next, than you. Next week, you. next week we're going. <laughs> um, no, but um, we are in Chicago right now at the trade show. I actually just saw a picture of uh, the group that was there um, last night eating deep dish pizza. So yeah. there was a lot left of, I don't know if they were just begun or if it was over, but usually it's, you're done and there's a lot left. Slice of that. It's good. Yeah. Even the leftovers of the, the deep dish are better than like the actual when they bring it out. Like the reheat, it's kind of like lasagna. It's like it's better when it's I don't, I don't know leftovers. I don't know about that. It's yeah. Still good. I'll take some of it. Might be having some of that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, next week we have the NAEA event. You said that one's here. Here in Orlando at the. I can't remember. Batul, can you go to um, the site? It's uh, just pull up. Uh, crossingtax.com and then um, I'm actually going to this one um, it's a new one I don't think we've ever been to this one uh, there it was uh, scroll up a little bit yeah Marriott. so it's a JW Marriott yeah so that should be fun we have uh, uh, how many days is that it actually starts on Sunday, which is a little different. Um, so we set up on Sunday. They have like a dueling pianos that night. Oh, nice. And then it's I think it's all in like the exhibit. So they're getting people in there. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and then it's just Monday, Tuesday. Um, so I'll be in and out of that show uh, the next week. Um, but yeah, the uh, the digital currency thing is interesting yeah it'll be uh i'm sure the year it rolls out definitely going to be some issues with it definitely going to be some forms not issued when they should have been um but it looks like a lot of their statement is how they kind of take everything and maybe a little bit more leeway with this is preparing in good faith on it or trying your best to get it to be reported because obviously the tracking of it and the issuing of these forms is going to be either a little slower or a little off for the first couple of years, probably. But I did uh, see that. I did see something where the IRS is like kind of like similar uh, statement where they were like, as long as you're like attempting to try to report it correctly, mm-hmm. they're going to have a little grace. Yeah. So it'll be, uh, I know, obviously, they've been wanting to get something out there for a while. So yeah, it should be fun for our team, the uh, programmers and um, engineers on that side. Uh, I don't think it would be that much different than. Reporting to 99B information? Probably not. There's a lot of complications in that world that... Uh, yeah. It's... The way over my head. Yeah. Mine as well. So, but... Yeah. We'll see how that uh, eventually rolls out. And I'm sure they'll be making some changes to it after year one of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. You got anything else for us? I do not. Except I dominated you sort of mm. last week on the golf course. That's Actually, I did not. I think you just played terrible on the back. I did. Still beat you by 13 strokes. You did. But I will – I just appreciate you letting me – I just wanted to make you feel better on that back nine. It made my – That great. July 4th just that much better. You're welcome. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm I, I will, and forgiving we'll probably uh, go to this course on Thursday and just do a similar uh, showing. Yeah. I heard it's great. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. I'll yeah. let everybody know. Um, we'll be back next week. Yes. I'll All be right. here. Cool. Thanks, man. All right. We'll see. You. All right.